Hello everybody and welcome to this video where I am going to be giving you a big freaking bite of reality smamiches. Okay? This is the review of reality sandwiches by Allen Ginsberg and these poems are from 1953 through 1960. I was confused by the title until I let me see until I read the poem on Burroughs's work and the last stanza here says a naked lunch is natural to us we eat reality sandwiches but allegories are so much lettuce don't hide the madness i actually love that little chunk that was really good um the next poem in here actually is called love poem on a theme by whitman um and i liked this actually because i am reading at leaves of grass right now which is very dense for what it is but that's a different review for another day um but i liked this poem almost more than um i'm liking leaves of grass which is kind of funny with that said um this book is not as good as i would have hoped at least for me and to explain why I feel that way and what my thoughts are, when I read the City Lights Poets Anthology, Pocket Poets Anthology, the poems from this book that are in there are really good, which is awesome. And I'm glad I have them. But this has, I don't know, 83 plus pages of poems. And the poems are so different from each other um what's another good example okay um they are so all over the place in structure that it, sitting down and trying to read more than one or two poems at a time through this was a bit jarring Especially when he starts getting into concrete stuff. Um, there, there was one bit like this here. Like this part. That's kind of clever. Like what if the worlds were a series of steps? What if the steps joined back at the margin? What the fuck? Like it's clever. But why? Why? It, I don't know. And then, so then we have a different use of capitals. Um, and then the farther in we get, um, shit just starts getting weird. And um, it just gets weirder and weirder. And I don't know, man. It just really started to throw me off. There are times when Ginsburg excels. I think those times are when he innocently talks about sex. And I say innocently because I feel like every time he talks about sex, there is an innocence to it that um, most people don't have. And he's not trying to be innocent about it. He will get very graphic, but... In his graphicness, there is an innocence that most poets don't have. And so when you see it like that, you know how real it is because that is him. Like, I think probably more than anything, if you read um, him describing sexual encounters and had no idea you were reading Ginsburg, you would know that was Ginsburg by the time you were done. The other thing he nails and does so well, and I've talked about this before, 
is the relationship between him and other family members. Whenever he talks about someone in his family, it is so real, so, like, sadly brutal. I don't know another way to describe it. It is just visceral, but in a way where you just kind of feel for him. Now, when he starts talking about all of his homies, it it gets, like, you, you get so annoyed. Or at least I do. I'm just like, okay, dude, we get it. You know all the other beats. You're a beat. We get it. Like, we are very proud of you. You are a very popular boy. Congrats, dude. But when it just, it it's just over and over and over again. The other thing, and I think this is just because I do not come from the same background, but his relationship with his spirituality, with his religion, is something that I cannot connect with. And so when I read him doing this, it's the same thing with Kerouac, and I'm sure to an extent, him and Kerouac probably had some amazing philosophical conversations about religion. And I'm sure those conversations inspired some amazing poetry. But it just does not click with me. I just, I as soon as it starts, I'm like, I don't know where I am. I'm lost. Could someone tell me how to get back to the frozen food section? Where is my mother? Like, someone... It's, it's just, like, I have... It, it's gone, okay? It's like that episode when of uh, Spongebob when Squidward got in the time machine and went too far. That's what I feel like when um, Ginsburg starts talking about religion. It's just, nope. Another topic that comes up a lot in his work that I've read so far is through this period of time, he was traveling a lot. He was um, living in Berkeley for a bit, living in New York for a bit, um, going to Mexico, going to Paris. He was just all over the place. And the funny thing is, is that whenever he seemed to get somewhere, he seemed to miss the place that he was at before more than be enamored by the place where he was at. And um, most people would call that depression, where um, the things that you thought interested you don't interest you anymore. Um, and then you just start longing for things that you think will make you feel better. But then when you get those things, you realize that they aren't the things that will make you feel better. Um, so, whatever. I'm not his fucking therapist. But anyway... This was a good read. I'm glad I read it. I don't think I'm going to be dipping into this one a whole lot. Um, yeah. I, I really am getting to the point with Ginsburg where I think you need to find kind of like a greatest hits of his stuff. Because he does have some great poetry. But I fear in me telling you that that the greatest hits you pick up would not be the greatest hits that I would pick. So I'm wondering if I should start doing like an essential reading of certain poets because I feel like, you know what else I'm going to do? I'm going to get that. Um, I, I've been putting it off forever because I know I have everything that's in it, but um, the essential Bukowski, the green cover book, like lime green that um, Abel, God damn it. I can't remember what his last name is. The one that he put together, because I'm really curious is if that is really the essential. You know what? Fuck it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to start checking this stuff out because I feel like there's so much good shit out there, but a lot of it gets buried um, in stuff that just isn't that good. And if, because uh, I know there's a lot of Ginsburg collections and I'm and I bet they have Howell and Caddish, and I don't know, like maybe another poem, 
who who knows who knows but um i feel like he's more than that and um it took me a long time to realize that with ginsburg and um it makes me think that there's probably a lot of other people out there who feel the same way so i i think i'm gonna take that on we'll see how this goes but anyway so that's reality sandwiches um it's got its moments it's pretty good um but there's some stuff in here that's just confusing it makes your eyes hurt sometimes it's all over the place um but there are some diamonds in the rough so with that said i will talk to you guys later I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Creo and my followers on Patreon, I appreciate the hell out of you guys, and thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the career of the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.